It is a new year and welcome back to a new season of Writing Done Right. We have been off for a little while and I spent some time thinking about how to incorporate Writing Done Right into our schedule going forward so we can expect some videos in the new year. And today we want to launch out talking about some of the changes to the Audacity software platform that we have talked about in the past using for audiobook production. And as we get into this, I want to talk about some of the challenges that I have had and how some of those challenges might have been resolved. So I'm going to go ahead and take us through this journey. Thanks for checking out this video by Writing Done Right. I am Tom Roski, an author and a technology consultant, and here we bring you some of the writing tips from the technological world. And today we did want to talk about some of the changes to Audacity. So the last time we did an Audacity video, I think it was even before the company was purchased. So it was purchased by a company, and uh, right around, it was right before they re released version uh, 3 of Audacity. Now we are up to 3.7. Now 3.0 up to 3.3 generally worked exactly as it has in the past. 3.4 introduced a new file format and a bunch of new changes, some of which caused some serious regression in the software package. Now, I was going to just build a brand new computer and install Audacity on it and show you what some of those are to find that some of those regressions have actually been fixed in this time. And so I did want to talk to you through what I think could be part of the problem and just kind of encourage you that if you are having issues with Audacity right now, it could be the version you are on or some of these could be issues that occurred if you upgraded your software rather than did a new install. So that might be the last ditch effort that you try. Now, now, I wanted to talk about four specific items. The first is Audacity has released a new audio file format. So this is the AUD3 format. So the old version of Audacity, it would save a single small file and then a giant folder of contents to help that file along. Now the challenge is if you are copying files and you didn't properly copy that large folder, it would cause your entire audio system to break. So what they did is they introduced the new AUD3 file format, which is one massive file now. And effectively, all they've done is taken the contents of that folder and combined it inside of the file. So we have huge files now, but there's no accompanying folder. So as long as you have that file, you should be good to go. Now, there are some issues people have had with it to the point where they did actually release a tool to help you fix a broken file. I have had one bad broken file that I was not sadly able to fix with that. But this does actually solve that complicated factor of having a folder and a file accompanying it. So this is actually a really good change because we get do get one large file, but that one large file is all that you need to transport the data from one computer to another or to put it into your backups or whatever else. Now, what I did find in this new file though is that filters may not work right. I was encountering some issues. In fact, I was even experimenting with other replacement software packages because those filters that we have in order to get us the proper quality for the ACX file format were constantly broken. They weren't working right. Mostly that RMS normalization tool was not giving me normalization strategies properly. And so I ran through and it was taking a long time to run these up to five to 10 minutes per a single file to try and run the filter on. And I was like, what in the world is going on? So what I found, if you are encountering that problem where it takes a long time to run your filters and they don't work right, what I found is the problem is this new file format seems to be the issue. So take that, export that as the highest quality WAV file that you can, open the WAV file and then run your filters and everything ran exactly as anticipated. So that is really your fix for that particular issue. 
The second one I wanted to talk about is there is a new default that could impact recording. So of course you need to record your files at 44.1 hertz. I did run into one of my computers where the 44.1 hertz was not working properly. And in fact, other people have reported the same thing where it would default to a 48 hertz even if the system was set at 44.1. So you have to go into your audio settings in that circumstance and make sure that everything in the whole platform preferences is set to 44.1. And then there was one version where I had to go back and change a bit rate, but I think that was the broken uh, 3.4.2 version. In the new version of 3.7, everything in that seems to be resolved. But just be aware, some people have had issues with that 44.1 hertz in the past. And if you are running into that problem, if you can, upgrade up to the 3.7. If that doesn't work, wipe the entire thing from your system and just do a fresh install of 3.7. That should solve that particular problem if you can't get everything else in. Okay, so the next issue was editing code. When you are, uh, so what I like to do is I'll record my whole audiobook and then I'll leave like 10 seconds of silence at the end of the file. That 10 seconds ends up, I cut that into the various sizes that I need for in between sentences and semicolons and paragraphs and things like that. So what I was finding is when I was copying those sections out to paste them throughout is instead of adding it into the pasted segment, it was creating a whole new file underneath it and basically giving you separate clips on different timelines, which was really messed up. And so the developers said that they were working on a way to do non-destructive timeline editing, which makes a little bit of sense, but it caused a massive regression. They have said this was a problem, and it does appear that in version uh, th uh, 3. Point, it must be 3.4.2, or maybe even a version higher than that that seems to have fixed it. I did test out my uh, a fresh new install of 3.4.2. It did not have that problem, but a previous 3.4.2 on a different computer did have that problem. 3.7 does not have this problem anymore. There was a setting inside of your uh, inside of your preferences in order to go in and make sure you, I think it was like disable um, destructive editing. I'll look for that setting, what that was, and put that here on the screen. Just be aware if you're pasting stuff in and it's creating extra timelines and shifting stuff around and un unexpected behavior, that is that problem. I can tell you a brand new 3.7 does not do that. So once again, if you've upgraded from a previous version up to a 3.7, 4.1 or 3.4.2 even, and you get that regression, you might need to go in and fix that. The other thing that they did is they made the audio source selection a little bit more robust, but by default, nothing is selected. So you want to go in there onto your audio file, and they added a new button up in the tool uh, toolbar for um, audio source. You want to pull that down, and then you have a lot more fine granular control over which devices on your system you're using. However, those particular systems, uh, by default, it doesn't have anything properly selected. So make sure you do that. And now we have the option to monitor silently and a few other options on the uh, record monitoring lines as well. So there are a few new features in there uh, that uh, you do need to be aware of if you are adding new systems. So those are kind of the four new major things that I have found that deeply impacted my ability to produce audiobooks. So let me know if you've encountered those issues or if you've encountered any other ones and I'll see if I can't look into those as well if you leave me something there in the comments. So there is some new changes to the Audacity file, the, the Audacity software package and how they might relate. So hopefully those might help you solve some of the issues you could have seen if you were attempting to do some audiobook stuff. Now, as far as a brand new install, if you're just getting into it, make sure you're installing that new version 3.7. That does seem to have all of these fixes already in place in my early testing. Now, I just did the test today on the brand new Linux Mint version 22.1 beta. That still has three 
0.4.2 in the repository. Uh, so if you do want to go with that later version, there is a PPA to add, uh, which uh, I'm not going to go into what that means on this particular video. It relates only to Linux Ubuntu-based systems. Uh, or there is also on Linux, the flat pack is available as a 3.7 as well. Uh, on Windows or Mac, you can just download the 3.7 and be done with all of that. So let me know if those tips helped you out. Once again, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And we look forward to helping you with your writing causes on the technology end here on Writing Done Right in a brand new year of 2025.